Hello guys, welcome back to another episode here on European Confessions. There is a message that I want to share with you guys. And this message, uh, it came from an interview that our team had with one woman who wanted to confess that she is a witch. This was after our team went into the field and they conducted this interview and next week they are supposed to go to this other area and they are supposed to conduct another interview in that family it is said that there is one who is a witch so she wants to tell her own side of the story hoping that they are not going to be kicked out of that woman's homestead like it always happened so the message reads like this hello my brother can you please post for me i am a woman who is aged 52 years old and i have my own confession that i want to share with you my confession my brother goes on like this i grew up and when i grew up my grandmother was the one who was taking care of me in fact my grandmother started taking care of me ever since I was one week old. This was after my own mom had died during childbirth. What happened to my mom is that she had lost so much blood when she was giving birth to me. Then she passed away. After my mom had died, that was when my grandmother, this grandmother of mine, who then started taking care of me. She was my mom's mom. So grandmother took me and she went with me to her workplace. My grandmother, she was working in the farms. And when I started working there in the farms, what started happening is that whenever I would ask my grandmother, about my father or for her to tell me my father's name so that i can know where i come so that i can know where my father comes from my grandmother will start crying and she will say that she didn't want to have anything to do with my father so that is the life that i had when i was growing up while least i was staying with my grandmother at the farm where she was staying and working when I was staying with my grandmother at that farm where she was staying and working, that white man, I then found favor in his eyes and he started taking care of us and he was even sending me to school. He was sending me to school until I was in Form 3. That was when in our country there was that thing that started happening, the land reform program. So that white man left his farm and he left our country. Unfortunately for me, when that white man left the country, there was no one who could take care of us and there was no one who could take me to school. So I had to drop out of school when I was in Form 3. That was when I started going around and I then found a job. I was working in a tuck shop. It was a small grocery shop. And the woman who was the owner of that small grocery shop, she was going to those churches which are called the white garment churches. She was a prophet as well. And when I started working for her and when she had invited me to come to their church, I then started enjoying that religion. So I started going to the white garment church. But as for my grandmother, she didn't want anything to do with someone who goes to church. So unfortunately, I stopped working at that woman's grocery shop. When I was 20 years old, there was something strange that happened to me. One morning, I woke up, and when I woke up, I then found out that there was someone who had made some tribal markings on my body. In our culture, people usually have those tribal markings whereby they take a razor blade and they make some tribal markings or on any part of your body. So on that morning, when I woke up, I noticed that there was blood everywhere. And when I started looking around, I then saw that the blood was coming from my back as well as it was coming from my forehead. I then saw that on my back, there was someone who had sliced me with a razor blade, making those tribal markings six times. And I then found out that even on my forehead, that same person had made some tribal markings using a razor blade. They had sliced my forehead three times and blood was just coming out. So when I was busy looking around, folding the blankets, that was when I saw that there was a razor blade. And my brother, you know where this razor blade was that was full of blood. It was underneath my grandmother's pillow. 
me and my grandmother, we used to share the same bed. And when I found out that this razor blade that had been used to slice up my forehead and my body, I had found it underneath my grandmother's pillow. I then decided to confront her. And when I had showed her the razor blade and the markings that were all over my body, my grandmother then said, Ah, my grandchild, it is not I who made all of these markings, but I suspect that the witches of this place, they are the ones that have done this to you, my grandchild. From there on, that razor blade just disappeared. I don't even know where my grandchild mother ended up hiding that razor blade. After that, I then started having very strange dreams. The first dream that I had, my brother, is that in my dream, I saw that one of my grandmother's brother, he had died and we were attending his funeral. It was my grandmother and I, but at that funeral, there were some strange people that were there. That was when we were offered some food in form of meat and this meat. I then noticed that the meal that we had been offered in form of meat, this meal had been offered to all the people that were attending my grandmother's brother's funeral. When I looked at the meat, this meat, it contained of intestines as well as a liver and a heart and all the people that were attending that funeral, they all refused to eat that meat because of the way that it had been presented to us. But my grandmother said to me, my grandchild, let us eat this meal for it is good. Me and my grandmother, we then started eating and enjoying all of that meal that everyone who was attending that funeral had refused. After I had this strange dream before even three days had passed that was when we received the sad news that my grandmother's brother that same one that i had dreamt about whereby me and my grandmother we were attending his funeral that man he had passed away what happened is that he only complained of a minor headache and he just died just like that so my grandmother then went and after my grandmother had gone to attend a brother's funeral when my grandmother returned back home i then found out that the same meat that i had seen in my dream that was the same meat that she had brought and this thing now it was happening in the physical world when she came back from the funeral she said, oh, my grandchild, when I went to attend my brother's funeral, they then slaughtered a cow. So I then decided to take this meat and it was the same meat that I had seen in my dream. She then said, my grandchild, let us eat this meat. So me and my grandmother, we started eating that meat. And the other thing that my grandmother was doing is that whenever there was a funeral, my grandmother would never go to that funeral. She would make sure that by the time that she would go and attend that funeral, she would only arrive at that funeral after people had finished burying that person. This is what my grandmother used to do all the times. When I was 24 years old, that was when I started to hear strange voices. These voices, they would always call me at night. Whenever the evening would have arrived, I would start to hear the voices calling me and these voices, they would be calling me by my first name. And when these voices would have called me, I would wake up and when I would go outside, I would then see that Amongst the people that will be calling out my name, even my grandmother, she will be outside with some strange people. But amongst those people, I then saw that the same woman who was a prophet from the White Garment Church, she was with my grandmother, that woman that I used to work for, that one that had a grocery shop. But what amazed me each and every time that we would go out into the night doing our witchcraft business, my grandmother and that woman, they were the best of the best friends. This only happened at night but whenever it was daytime these women they pretended as if they hated each other but yet they were both witches after that that was when i got married and after i had gotten married that was when i had my children two boys and one girl but what happened is that after i had been married i was then kicked out of the village where i was married 
whose father was the local village headman, it was because when my child and that child and other kids were in class, that headman's child had chosen to steal a pen from my own child. And this made me to become very angry and I chose to bewitch that child. So when everyone found out that it was me who had done this, that was when I was kicked out of the village and my husband as well chose to get divorced from me. After that, when I returned back to my grandmother, unfortunately, my grandmother also passed away. The reason as to why my grandmother had passed away, it was because she had gone out into the night and she had tried to enter into this homestead. People that she was trying to bewitch, they had some traps set at their homestead. So if you are a witch, if you try to enter into their homestead, then something bad will happen to you like it happened to my grandmother. What happened to my grandmother is that she went into that homestead and when she tried to enter into that homestead, then there was someone who then hit a nail straight into her skull and she passed away. This thing happened in the spirit, but later on in the day, she died physically. After my grandmother had passed away, our crew was short of one member. In our crew, it was only me and that woman who was a prophet in the White Garment Church who were only remaining. And when we saw that it was only the two of us against the world, we then chose that it was better for us to stick together. Wherever we would go, we had to go together so that we can watch each other's backs. And after that, we then made an oath. This oath was between us and it was more like a contract because when you are a witch, you have to set some rules and boundaries. Usually, you have to make a sacrifice and these sacrifices, it doesn't matter if it is your child or if it is your relative. Per year, you have to do this thing in our language. It is called jhana. And this jhana, what you do is that it is a sacrifice that all of you have to do. You have to sacrifice either your relative or your child. So me and that woman who was a white garment prophet, we then chose that we had to sacrifice our children one by one so that we can eat them up. So what we started doing, my brother, is that we said that let us start by sacrificing our last born what we chose my brother is that we then said that we have to sacrifice our children we will start sacrificing our children with our last born kids and as for my last born my last born was now in grade seven and that white garment prophet a last born was doing form six so we then ate my own kid and after we had eaten my kid that was when i said to that white garment prophet it is now your duty to sacrifice your own child so that we can eat your child. But she then started saying, no, I cannot do that to my child because at that time, a child had passed with flying colors. So the child was supposed to go to the UK because there was someone who was willing to sponsor that woman's child. So she started feeling guilty and she said that my child is supposed to go to the UK so that my child can have a better life for himself. My brother, when she said that she cannot keep her promises anymore, I was really angry and I was jealousy because he was the woman who had helped me to sacrifice my own child. And after I had sacrificed my child, we have eaten my child together. But now she was refusing that we eat her own child. So I said, this is going to be a war. And I didn't show her that I was going to start a war. So what I did, my brother, is that I then went to Malawi. All of these things were happening in the spirit. Before my grandmother had passed away, she had left this other basket. In our country, we call it Rosero, and it is made out of reeds. In English, it is called a winnowing basket. So my grandmother had left that winnowing basket for me, and that is what we use as a form of transportation whenever we want to skip from one country to another. So I then got into that winnowing basket and I traveled to Malawi. When I went to Malawi, I then went there and I met up with some other witches that were 
higher ranking than I was because I wanted more powers so that I can fight with this other best friend of mine. When I went there, my brother, I went six times. Each and every time I'll get into the spirit and I would travel to Malawi at night and I will come back to Zim. And after I had gone to Malawi six times, I then saw that I had so much power. The first thing that I did is that I then sacrificed my best friend's last born, that woman who was a white garment prophet. I sacrificed all of her children and after I had finished sacrificed her children out of anger, I then said that as for you, I want to punish you because you ate my own child but you refused that I should eat your own child. I then hit her so that she can have a stroke and this stroke, my brother, the way that it was and this stroke that I punished her with in the afternoon, she could not move her body. She could not do anything for herself. But when the evening would have arrived, she would be transformed and she would be become something like a horse to me, but not like your horse, a normal horse. She was more like a hyena. So these hyenas, they are the ones that we use as a means of transportation when we are going around in our local area. So the hyenas are more like our horses at night. I then transformed her so that at night she can become my horse in form of a hyena. Right now, my brother, the problem that I am facing is that the thing that is happening to me is that I then sacrificed my own children. I only have one child that is left amongst the kids that God had given me me but this boy of mine he is giving me a lot of trouble and he is sleeping with me physically and it is because of my witchcraft this is what is making him to demand all of these things like sleeping with me and I don't even know what to do with my child. I have tried to force him to find a woman so that he can marry that woman but he is saying that no, I cannot get married to anyone and right now my child, it is like he is mentally ill and whenever you will be acting as if he is crazy, he is saying that he is seeing my friends, dead children, those are the ones that are tormenting him. Please help me, my brother. I have suffered and I know that I have suffered. Me being a witch, it was not because I wanted to become a witch, but I was initiated into witchcraft without my own knowledge. I never thought that I would end up being a witch. If you know any prophet that can help me, please help me because these markings, they are all over my body. These markings, they are the ones that made me to become a witch. Please help me as well as if you can find anyone that can help my own son so that he can have a normal life like other kids. Right now, my son, he had found a job at this other farm here in Zim. So at that farm, what they are doing is that they are keeping those chickens that are called broilers. He then ran away and he came back home. He said that he ran away because he wanted to be with me. Please help me. And what happens is that whenever I have intercourse with him, then there is a snake that comes out. This is a spiritual snake. When this snake comes out, it will start licking my private parts as well as licking his own private parts. So this snake, it leaves some saliva. This saliva, it is more like poisonous. So my son, he keeps on having these small blisters on his private parts and these blisters, when you look at them, you will think that maybe he is a sexually transmitted disease, but it is because of that sneak, the spiritual sneak that leaks up his private part. Please help me, my brother. Dear listeners, right there was a translation of an interview that our team had. Strange things do happen in this world. Let us meet again in the following episode.